Hey there, hey beer viewers. Welcome back. Shut up, Greg. <laughs> Fuck you. Hey there, beer tubers. Welcome back to Beer Analysis 101 with your host, Maxwell Starr. Back tonight after a two-week hiatus that we took for the Albino Rhino Beer Fest trip. And, of course, last week being six a dog. Um, this week, we're going to do something actually super special that I brought up to these guys last the other the other week when uh, we did the well and piss up. Ba -ba 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 we're going to take a look at something from one of my favorite breweries from New Brunswick. This is from Trailway Brewing in Fergton, New Brunswick. This is their Inception, an American-style IPA brewed with Falconer's Flight. We'll get into the details on that in just a moment. But first and foremost, let's introduce our panel for tonight, which includes Mr. Average Joe of the Beer Patrol. How are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm fan fucking tastic. Also, why is the super special again? Okay, maybe because I think it's super special. It better be fucking great. That's all hey, I'm saying. You, can't, you, can't, get... you cannot start with super special. You can't. No, yeah. Don't make that face. But you okay, can't wait. Well, maybe it is super special. At least to me it is because okay. it's not every day that I get to do not only a New Brunswick beer, but what I consider to be one of the best New Brunswick breweries right at the moment. And also, you know, the, 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 the hip stuff right now, like New England style Anyway, let's so go. what you're saying is the hype is real. So, and yeah. you didn't really say uh, answer the question. Like, how are you? Uh, I'm all right, I guess. We're drinking I, shelf turds from uh, Fredericton. So whatever. Shelf turds. It's only a, not even a month old. It's a month old tomorrow. Still, okay. a, turd. Still a turd. Shut up. I I don't feel like a man who doesn't wear a uniform deserves to lecture you, Nick. I'm just saying. Hashtag yeah. Team Nick. Shut I, it's very right. rare that I'll agree with Greg, but uh, let, yeah, let's go with that. All right, so Ashley right. Sexton of Sexton Brewing Co., a great home brewing channel. You guys want to check them out. Uh, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Um, I haven't posted anything like a month. I know. I need to work on that. I am. I like your stuff, so I've been actually watching it. Right <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to rub it in. It's like, dude, it's like, you make great homebrew videos. and should, Everybody should check them out. And that means he might actually post them. You're just trying to get some free beer from me. No, I'm not trying to get some beer. Free, 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 stop, beer stop being a fucking beer shill. Dude, who gave you tonight's beer? You're welcome for hosting. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, moving along to Mr. Off the Tenth, formerly on the Tenth, formerly in the Basement Beer Reviews. How are you doing tonight, Chris? I'm good, thanks. Um, I'm looking forward to this overly hyped brewery. Um I'm kind of hoping that it's going to be as good as Nick has been crying over and just gushing in our private chats about how much he just wants to make love to the brewer at Trayway. Gross. But thanks for having me. I, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks, Raptors. Let's go tonight, Raptors, 9 o'clock. Go, Raptors. All right. And uh, and speaking of Toronto, we've got our Toronto homeboy, Mr. Greg. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I'm doing very well, Nick. I'm excited to be back. Excited after the piss up. That's about it. Go Raptors, go! Yeah. yeah, we made it through the piss up unmolested, thanks to, well, not Greg, but usually that's I, the story. Well, Nick, the, Nick, you did attack me. I'm still a little offended and injured from that <laughs> from that brutal sneak attack, and then you you ran away. What? That's that that part where you tried to hoop a bottle of uh, of Kentucky bastard. Well, that was afterwards. That, that <laughs> was that that was semi voluntary. I'm talking when you attacked me at the fest and ran away. I should have had Chad. Oh, where, I, where I ran up behind you at the festival with a, with a rolled up t shirt and bonked you in the back of the head and then ran off. Yeah, the the dude I was with, I was at <laughs> Sean and Ed's. He's like, "Did you know that guy? Did you did he just hit you and run away?" I said, oh, "I I know that fucker, but I still think he I still think he needs to get kicked out." <laughs> You deserved it. Let's be honest. You always deserved well, he it. He did, you know. But if you know what, I if I didn't think you could take it, Greg. That's what a rapist says to his victim. Okay, all right. moving right along. Moving right along, Mr. Jamie, how are you doing tonight, sir? Good. Thanks, Nick, for the free beer. Uh, so style ten out of ten, personal ten out of ten. Done. Right. Free. Thank you. We've already got somebody scores. We haven't even started yet. Yeah. And of course, last but uh, not least, the man of the half hour, the guy that hosted the Albino Rhino Beer Fest, the Albino Rhino himself. How are you doing there, Chad? Oh, I am just peachy keen, sir. How about yourself? Eh, not too bad. I'm feeling a lot better after getting over this flu that I had last week. Was it the radar flu? 
Yeah, I think it's the one I caught off a of radar. Uh, anyway, uh, while we're talking about the Albino Rhino Beer Fest, how much money did you raise this year for the uh, Ronald McDonald House of Hamilton? Uh, just over 5300 I don't think I heard that. Just over 5300 It's awesome, yeah. buddy. That is nice. Yeah. All right. It's fantastic, actually. Really good. Well, it was definitely a good, definitely a good day, and for uh, for a good cause. I'm glad it. Uh, I'm glad it uh, raised quite a bit of money. That weather was perfect too. Yeah, it was like oh, literally. Man. It stopped raining like in the morning before the fest. That weather was beer god weather. Yeah, yeah. It literally like skies opened up literally and everything, and didn't start and raining it, until almost. The, the way you know that the beer gods shone on us was there was yeah. a beer festival happening in Kitchener Waterloo, and twenty tents were destroyed. That's wow. That's shitty. Wow. And then it's not even a hundred. Like, this is like a hundred kilometers away. <laughs> the weather afterwards was absolutely shit, but uh, it waited yeah. until 7 p.m. So perfect. Hey, yeah, yeah literally. The fastest like, tear down I've ever seen. Yeah. Fast, wow. Like, the, tear, the fest ended at seven o'clock and the skies opened up right after that. So it was great timing. The, the hot sauce dude was like 6 30. He's packing them. Like, Jesus. And everyone's like, ah, fucking tornadoes are coming. Like, settle down. Just settle yeah, down. Yeah. And I went, he was so, gone before I even got a chance to try his hot sauce. Yeah. I mean, well, I didn't want to destroy my palate before for the end of the day. But yeah, I made that mistake, and I was crying for the next 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, somebody gave yeah. me Reaper jerky, I believe it was, and uh, didn't tell me it was Reaper jerky. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Fuck you, Redbeard. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. Speaking of Redbeard, actually, we need to uh, need to get down to the virtual Redbeard device because he's not with us tonight. So he's speaking beyond the uh, the YouTube. Thank you so much for having me, Macwell. Always a pleasure to be here, and uh, cheers to everybody else. If you believe what he is, whatever he says, that comes through okay. I don't. Did he literally send you different segments for each segment, like you would be here? Yeah, I think he did. Oh wow, well, gross! Thank Fuck you so much gross. for having me, Macwell. Yeah. Always a pleasure to be here, and uh, cheers to everybody else. Yeah, shut up, Red Beard. <laughs> yeah, we heard it the first time. Not sure why you repeated that. All right. Shut up. Well, I want to make sure. You... All right, let's get down to the uh, the history of Trailway. <laughs> Which I actually did have to do some digging to because it wasn't like all uh, oh, this was uh, information readily available. So the dream that became Trailway started in 2014 in Fergton, New Brunswick, when avid home brewers Dan Mason and Jake Saunders began plans to open a brewery together. With a name inspired by the local Ferguson Walking Trail, Trail, go to the Trailway. Um, the duo initially announced plans to open in October 2014, and brewing on a piece together 120 liter brewing system in a basement began selling their first kegs to local accounts that December of the same year. Trailway started with four beers their Whitney Coffee Stout, a Hoppy Amber Ale, and two different American Pale Ales. Uh, in November 2015, they announced uh, plans to expand and in March 2016 began brewing at their current location with a 10-barrel brew house using uh, four 10-barrel fermenters and a 10-barrel break tank. The brewery would also open their tasting room in retail outlet to the public two months later on May 28, 2016 and uh, quickly became a popular uh, Ferguson craft beer destination. Within six months, demand had outstripped supply so badly that they expanded further with three 30 barrel fermenters and a 30 tip barrel bright tank. So they literally had to triple their capacity. Uh, Trailway has since gone on to become one of New Brunswick's most creative breweries, known mainly for their hot forward beers. Uh, they also brew a multitude of beers, including sours, uh, fruit beers, and stouts, with a release schedule of about three to four new beers a month. Once, generally one a week these days. Uh, they also acquired a cool ship. Uh, in summer of 2018 to assist in creating better sour beers. And they also now have a barrel aging program with the first, first fruits of their labor due sometime in 2019. Uh, recently in September 2018, Trailway announced that they had purchased the nearby Boladrome <clears throat> located across the street from the brewery and are currently in the process of renovating it into a craft beer bowling alley. I love the sound of Trailway has also introduced their Candlepin Kolsch in honor of the new project. So other beers from Trailway include uh, Ripe American Pale Ale, Who John Hops IPA, uh, Good Aura uh, Hoppy Amber, Luster Session Ale, Green Island New England Style IPA, which I brought up to the bottle share last year and they made a double dry hop version that I brought this year. Uh, Black Hops Black IPA, Beyond Reality Raspberry Wheat, Dunder Australian Pale Ale, uh, Beans Coffee Oatmeal Stout, and they make many more. They've literally got oh, about 100 or something on tap. 
So tonight's beer, Inception, is a 6.5% ABV American IPA brewed with Falconer's Flight, which is a blend, a uh, proprietary blend of Pacific Northwest hops, which includes the seven seas, Cascade, Centennial, Chinook, Citra, Columbus, and Crystal, as well as the addition of experimental varieties developed by Hop Union LLC. I had to read off of that, their website. Anyway. Now, we've been properly introduced to Trailway. Let's go over to the beer histories. And I've got a funny feeling everybody's beer history is going to sound similar. Mr. Joe. What up, fool? Okay. Um, my history on this Movie? is what you gave to me, pretty much, right? Uh, yeah. But you've actually shared quite a few over the last couple of years. And you've actually given me personally, like, uh, probably about a half dozen at this point. Um, th I really like what Trailway does. Uh, I think they... Like, you know, as far as New Brunswick goes, there's probably not a lot of hazy options, so to speak. So um, I think I think they're a pretty damn good brewery. Um, for me, do they compare to some of the, you know, hyped uh, even Ontario breweries or, or, or American breweries? No, they're like a step below that, I think, personally. But I think what they do, they do well. Um, I've had a couple beers from them that I really do enjoy. I actually like the the Green Island better than your double drop uh, double dry hop version you brought this year. I thought the base one was a lot better, and that Urban Cabrero at three months old that you gave to me still pretty tasty. So um, yeah, I'm always down to try Trailway stuff. I think they do a damn good job, and you better continue to hook us up going forward. Yeah, fucking do it. You better do it. Yeah, and I tend to agree with that double dry hop Green Island. He was the dry hopping was too much of a good thing on that one. And too a little chalky vegetal chalky hopper -ish. it was just a little bit i mean maybe you sit on that for uh two three weeks maybe it, you know slows down mild becomes a bit more mild and subdued but uh you know as is it was a bit, bit much i think yeah and to be to be honest uh they like that special brewery only release that they did they actually shipped the whole bunch of it to one of the liquor stores in my area so i can go and, and that's one thing i hate about a lot of places that do it. it's brewery only and then like two weeks later you'll find them in local stores and you're like what the fuck that's not brewery only but you should say yeah. brewery only on the original day or whatever like come on yeah exactly yeah, yeah. And, and and what's even weirder is that it's showing up in government's Look yeah, that's, and anyway. that's shady. That's almost like they want to bring people to the brewery that day specifically, but then you know you're kind of kind of lying to your to your consumers, your customers. Yeah. So they're tasty. At least I like them. Anyway, uh, moving along to Mr. Ashley Sexton. Yeah. Uh, so I don't have a lot of experience with trail with Trailway um, or a lot of exposure. I should say the the first one I had was uh, I think the one the. Um, According to my tap, the Green Island that you brought last year, okay. the, uh, bottle share, and then uh, I also had a uh, a collaboration beer that they did for the Across the Nation pack with. Uh, oh Rangers. yeah, yeah. So I don't know who that was in collaboration with, but that was another IPA. So uh, it was Red Racer. Remember Red Racer and Trail? We made it. It was three piss. Oh my three, god, that's right. Yeah, three mm -hmm. something. Yeah, uh, it was called Three Beasts. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I don't really have anything else on trail life so sorry yeah that's fine i'm not surprised that nobody that, that you got any more experience past that because usually it's been me bringing up the stuff to ontario <laughs> <laughs> all right so moving along to uh chris who's been you know trying to drop a hint that he's still here oh no i just had a cough sorry sure. no um, sure it is. my history with uh what is this company oh yeah trailway uh just whatever you brought i seem to have been way off and my untapping nowadays fucking i think i must have just stopped doing it i just i've had so many beers now i'm just like i'll untap once in a while um uh experience with this beer never obviously had it thanks nick for uh for supplying us with this beer by the way yeah, no and uh, yeah and trailway they, they got their shit together i'll tell you but uh yeah that's my uh my history i've had a few stuff that you you've brought with you when you've come over to the albino rhino beer fest and yeah that's that's basically the extent of my trailway yeah I, and i think i left a bunch of trailway at your place there last year which i don't know no, if you ever drank you, you left a bunch of fucking uh wasn't trailway stuff what was it the uh, half hours was it half hour? no it was, well, that um, was the first when you were when you were at my place you left a bunch of sours remember a bunch of sours oh yeah all right, we'll get into that later. Yeah, we'll I remember what later. I sent. Okay. It was half hours on Earth. I'm pretty sure it was half hours on Earth. Well, it was the first year was half hours on Earth, but that was stuff that like Chad had given me to get you to mail to me because, you know. Did you leave a lot that, of stuff and then, and that, bottle, maybe? 
Brood and Bottle? You well, I lost some stuff from Brood and Bottle last year, but we're, we're getting off topic here. We'll talk about that in the after chat if we want. All right, so moving along to uh, Mr. Greg, what's your history with Trailway? My history is only what you've allowed me to have with it, Nick. And according to uh, Untapped, I have only had Dunder and Green Island. And I don't know if we had anything at this year's share because I haven't tapped in everything from this year's share yet. So that's my history is whatever Papa Lo allowed me to have, I've had. Yeah, we did too at, uh, at this year's share. We had the double dry hop Green Island and we had the vanilla beans. Okay, so I think I had the regular Green Island. I guess I've had the double hop now, and then I don't remember having the vanilla beans, but I'll see if it's in my photos. I got I got the video. It's going to be posted in about a couple weeks, so you, you will you will see yourself on camera, Greg. Oh, that's very exciting. And that means Greg will actually watch it. It's a fucking horrible review. I'll probably do it. All right, moving right along to uh, Jamie. What's your history with Trailway? Probably. I like an echo chamber here. Uh, whatever you brought to the share, um, we brought the the beans, the vanilla beans. Um, it was an oatmeal stuff, coffee stout. Yeah, it was like a vanilla oatmeal coffee stout. Yeah, which I liked, and then I think I had the was it almost nuclear? Oh yeah, the one we opened up at the Shitbucket Manor, the uh, yeah. the almost nuclear, yeah, it was uh, IPA, man, Mandarina Bavaria, lupulin and rich topped version of. Uh, well, they're like it's well, it's everything. Pretty much a lot of the stuff these guys make are New England styles, but yeah, and and they're both really good beers. So yeah, that's my uh, history. Just nice. those two. All right, and uh, Mr. Chad, I don't know if I've ever been to a trailway before or not. You did leave one El Generico at my house in 2017. So first beer I've had from them in two years now. Uh, I gave it a, I gave it an eight out of ten. I liked it. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, they're nice. sour, and that's it. Yeah, because uh, El Generico is like their their kettle sour, which I think in that year's version was just straight up sour. It wasn't like nowadays when they make your El Generico. Uh, I've actually got the label on the wall. Over here. Anyway, uh, El Generico now is um, it is like a, they add fruit. It's like a raspberry or a random fruit ver added version of it. But well, the first time that they made it, uh, which the can I brought, because uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's in my messy basement. But right up there on the wall, you can see where it's just this label all covered in El Luchador masks, which was one of the biggest reasons I wanted to bring it up that year. Anyway, um, yeah, so so moving along from that, um, yeah, I, I kind of figured that everybody's experience with Trailway was going to sound the same. Uh, we do have one more person to hear from when it comes to their beer history, and that would, of course, be... I've had a few Trailway beers at this point, um, all thanks to Nick. He brought some uh -huh. here when he came before we went to the bottle share, and then he brought some to the bottle share, and I have been a pretty big fan of... Um, pretty much every single one of their beers that I've tried. Anyway. Yeah. So I haven't given my history. And to be honest, I got to look on my untapped to see how far back my history goes. I know I've reviewed at least a half a dozen of their beers on, on untapped, but uh, I think my first time I ever had a trailway was going back to late 2016. And I'm trying to remember what it was. Just a quick glance here. Which I should have done earlier, but I'm sorry. Yeah, the first time I ever had one was just after Christmas of 2016. So after they expanded. And it was Who John Hops, which was really good and good aura at around the same time. Uh, anyway, yeah. So moving along, we have comments here. We got uh, anybody... Other than Greg, want to volunteer to read them? I can read them. Hey, uh, yeah, go ahead, Jamie. Uh, Kent Beer Reviews says, cheers, gentlemen. And then Lee Russell chimes in, greetings, fellow kids. <laughs> um, and then he says, goddamn nerd. Kent Beer Reviews, smiley face. And then good old rib beard. And then uh, Lee and uh, Mr. Kent go back and forth uh, trying to figure out who named a rib beard. Ribbeard. Lee uh, Lee takes 
ownership of it. He says a rare moment of genius. Uh, but then uh, Kent says, no, he's always a drooling long. I changed his name. So they're get, they got to figure that out. We have to go back and uh, watch the game tape. Who uh, who named him Ribbeard? And Eric Hill says, cheers, fools. And then Bylog says something, not even going to read it. <clears throat> They should get co ownership, I think. Co ownership. I thought we were friends, yeah. Jamie. You should almost <laughs> never read stuff that, that Greg posts, to be honest. Beer, Beer Burglar says this would be a more professional. Uh, this would be more professional if Reb Beard was Reb edited Beard, in post show. Would be like he was here all along. And I agree. Oh, and Joe Ganzel, who Joe I've never Gunzel. heard of before, says, Hi, all. Huh? I don't know who he is, but Joe, Joe watched my uh has been watching my reviews, and then one night when we went over to the after show on Nick's channel, he's been following Nick, and I yeah, believe he's been following me over. He actually watches pretty close to everything I yeah. post, which is awesome. So thank you yeah. very much. Good to yeah, yeah. Lot, lots of comments, positive comments, and yeah. Don't yeah, listen to Greg. Sure. He's a piece of shit. That's, that's definitely that's listen to me. Subscribe, subscribe to Beer Burglar. We'll have content one day. And Greg no, never gets it. Get, never gets it through his head that maybe Joe's working undercover, and that's why he doesn't wear a uniform. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things Greg doesn't understand. You don't mm -hmm. have undercover cops go to talk to children at school. You, you have a uniform to represent the authority. You know the one thing that he doesn't understand: decibel levels and how they work. No, I don't. All right. So I think that microphone is his uniform. It is. A, it is a part of it because I'm too tired waiting for you guys. Yeah. Well, I mean, one thing I do know is that two things. Your that microphone is kind of blocking off the the beer that you've dribbled on your shirt. The other thing, of course, it's also blocking off the. Uh, is that your Ric Flair shirt? Woo! Woo! Okay. But so, all right. So, um, it's moving along to, does anybody? I don't know if anybody's actually ready to give thoughts or not. I don't you usually always just a specific order of some sort? Or? Well, there's, there's, I'm just saying, I'm fishing to see if anybody's ready to yeah, do right. that because yeah, yeah. it just feels like we've gone through this one pretty very quick. Let Chris go first. It then, is, it is, no, 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 no. Stay in order. Joe. Let's stay in order. Okay, so go ahead, Joe. What do you think? Oh, sure. I, I will form my opinion so you can all piggyback off it. Fuck. Exactly. All right, here we go. Um, that, way you're not, that way you're not copying what we're thinking. Yeah. Well, what I'm thinking is this beer is shit. Uh, no, the one thing I will say about this beer is um, it's very mildly flavored. Um, mm. The mouthfeel to me, when I first drink it, I feel like this is going to have the appropriate like New England style mouthfeel to it. And then I get like a seltzer water kind of a vibe to the beer. Um, very spritzy on the palate. Very uh, just carbonated to me. Um, not like super carbonated, but there's decent amount of carbonation. The flavor, though, this reminds me, and it's probably because they're using Falconer's Flight and outside of Citra, most of those are old school hops. It gives me like an older school IPA vibe to it, like more citrus, bittering citrus peel, like candied orange peel, bittering like white grapefruit, a um, little bit of resinous pine, a little bit of tropical fruit pump popping in like, you know, pineapple, mango, stone fruits. Uh, it's very easy to drink. If I was doing this blind, I would honestly mistake this for potentially like a pale ale. That's kind of the flavor profile I'm getting is something that's lighter in flavor for me. Uh, it's pretty solid, very easy to drink. I'm having no issues with it. Uh, 6.5%. Sure. I mean, the body's like, you know, higher side of light body, lower side of medium body. Uh, but overall I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's a good beer. It's, there's nothing crazy special about it. There's nothing bad about it. It's just, it's solid. I could drink a shit ton of these. Um, yeah, I don't know, nothing wrong with it. So personal preference, I would give this a Nick out of uh, five or a 7.5 out of 10 all day, every day. Um, stylistically, are we calling this? They say American IPA on the label. You, they pretty much do doing the style. So what are, what are we doing stylistically in that? Well, the, their, their official documentation in the rating on Untapped calls it an American IPA. Okay, which, American IPA. okay which, then it whatever that means today. Then. Well, then if it was because it makes a difference for style for me. If you're calling this a New England style IPA, the only thing that really for me says it's a New England style IPA for me personally is the look of it. I mean, it's hazy. Mm. Uh, but outside of it, like for me, this kind of drinks like an old school American IPA. So as far as it stylistically goes, I'd give it, a, I'd give it an eight out of 10. So eight out of 10 style, 7.5 out of 10 for personal preference. Now everyone piggyback off of Joe. Fucking get, get, get your, get your own opinions. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I'm up next anyway. So, and it, it's actually, it's a little funny because I, I'm, I'm sort of getting sort of different vibes from it too. Um, where did I want to start with this one? Um, First off, like yeah, like classified American IPA, but 
I personally don't get any bitterness on this whatsoever. I, I get a very soft mouthfeel, like right off the bat on the palate. There, there's no harsh bittering whatsoever. I get a little bit of a dankness off the aroma, um, but there's, you know, straight through to the, you know, to the finish, there, there, there's no bittering whatsoever. So to call this one an American IPA, I don't buy it so much. Um Flavor profile, though, and, and I'm sort of going against a little bit against what, what Joe was saying. I'm getting a lot of stone fruit, uh, more peach and apricot. Very subtle, though, like a little bit more subdued to what Joe was saying. Like the flavors don't pop on it. But for me, yeah, I'm, I'm getting more of those like uh, slightly underripe stone fruit vibes from it. Um, mouth feels great for me. Uh, I, I don't get the spritziness. I get a little bit more of a softer mouth feel to it. Um, it, and I guess to Joe's point, it sort of drinks a little bit, a little bit like a pale ale, just with the lack of bitterness to it. So, uh, but I mean, for six and a half, I could probably crush a few of these, no problem. Uh, I wouldn't get palate fatigue because there's very little to no bittering. Um, I would probably lean it a little bit more closer to a New, New England style IPA, but with just a much softer body, to, like with, with a much lighter body to it. So. Um, personal enjoyment though, I dig the vibe, like I, I like the flavors from it because they're not so aggressive or attacking or anything. So, uh, I'll give this an eight for personal enjoyment, but for style, just because it's, it's really, truly not an American IPA. I'll, I'll give it a seven. <clears throat> nice. Nice. Yeah. All right. And, uh, nice. next up of course is Mr. Chris. Okay. So. It's hard to piggyback or follow up these two professional beer tubers right now. But if this is labeled as an American IPA, this is by far the best American IPA I've drank. Because, but it's trying to be a New England style IPA, which is giving me, it's giving me a mixed review. I'm going to kind of piggyback what Joe was saying. The taste is big off uh, up front, but then it just fizzles way out. Like it, it goes to from a nice, solid beginning and then it just fizzes right right, right out uh carbonation on it i it, it is what it is it's not <clears throat> for me it's not super overly carbonated it's okay um smell is great i love i love the aroma on this beer there's not nothing offensive to it whatsoever taste is good as well i, I mean i really enjoy this everyone can crush anybody on this panel can crush a million of these and we all we'd all be a fucked up but other than that, it's good, it's drinkable, and it's actually really nice for people that are just, and I'll say this, like I say this about a lot of beers that are like this, these are very easy for people to transfer into from going from macro into something different. And, and if you're going to jump into an, an, an IPA or an American IPA, this would be a nice one for them to start off with. This is very easy to drink. There's nothing really offensive to this beer whatsoever. Um, so, I don't know, I'll give you my ratings. Um for personal preference, I really like this thing. I'm gonna give this an eight and a half out of ten. I could, if I wish I had more of these, because I would totally just be drinking this for the rest of the day. Um, <clears throat> and for what it is for style, it's labeled as an American IPA, and I, I know what we're saying on this one as a New England style IPA or northeastern IPA. And I mean, you're up in New Brunswick anyway, so you're up in the northeastern anyway. <sighs> It, de it depends on where this actually does fall. And it's labeled as an American IPA. I'm going to have to go with, uh, with, with Ashley Sexton on this one and bring it down a little bit because this is, for me, it's leaning more towards an, a New England style IPA, in my own opinion. You see what I did there? Anyway, so it's getting a 7 out of 10 for style. Very nice. I'm glad, I'm glad you... Uh... I'm glad you at least liked it somewhat. I thought figured that the juicy... Well, not the juicy... This style of beer would be right in your wheelhouse. So. Oh, it's good. I like yeah. it. All right, move on to Greg. What do you think? First of all, Chris, I just want to say that I have seen you in your uniform, and therefore your opinion is much more valid than anything Joe has to say. So, oh, number one. My uniform was a Raptor shirt when you saw me. It was a uniform. It still counts. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, that being said, Ashley Sexton is the flavor god, and he knows everything and tastes everything, tastes stuff that we can only dream of. So I'm just going to copy what he has to say. Yeah, it's more sort of stone fruit, kind of the apricot type thing, as opposed to the real tropical fruit that I'd really like to get from uh, one of these beers. Like, I don't get any mango or 
passion fruit or anything, or at least I don't pretend to get them. Um, but, you know, it's good. It is smooth. It is easy drinking. I sort of agree with Chris. I think this is probably something pretty inoffensive. Like, it's almost like... <sighs> I almost want to say, like, of New England IPAs, it's almost like a macro. It's kind of just, this is easy to drink. There's nothing bad about it, but it's certainly not the most flavorful one I've ever had. And it's good. Um, I personally would like to see a little bit more bright tropical fruits, if that makes sense. You know, more tropical, tropical leaf fruits. Uh, so I'm not going to get too hung up on the thing. I think they mislabeled this. It's not an American IPA. I don't know why they would put it as that other than, hey, we're from Canada, so this is an American IPA since New England is in America. I don't know. Um, so I'm not going to get too hung up on that. It's 7.5 uh, all around for me, both flavor, both style and personal enjoyment. It, it's solid. Nice. Even that, Even so, yeah, you still liked it. I did enjoy it. Nice. All right, Jamie, what do you think? Uh, so I wrote down for style, 8, and for personal enjoyment, 8.25. I won't go right. into too much about the flavor and all that. Everyone else has already said that, but just um, an IPA uh, like this is uh, something that I would buy again for sure. It's it's uh, highly enjoyable, um, and, uh, yeah, it's it's just a nice, easy-drinking um, flavorful, N not too flavorful, but just, uh, you know, the, the flavor that's there is really good. I like it. So I would buy it again. 8.25. Thanks. Nice. Thanks. Yeah, no problem, man. All right. And finally the albino rhino. All righty. So, um, like, like the original assessment way back at the beginning with Mr. Beer Patrol, uh, the only New England style thing I see in there really is is the look of it. Uh, looks looks the part, hazy as hell, beautiful look, uh, lighter than I was expecting, both in carbonation and in in mouthfeel, uh, lighter in flavor. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the old school North e like the old school East Coast IPAs, in that it has a little bit of that woodiness to it. It has a little bit of that uh, that just slight a bit of just unforeseen bitterness it's not overpowering at all it's nothing like that it's just it's it's there it reminds me of the old east coast ipas and the old uh ontario pale ales and all that of of almost 10 years ago that being said it's a good beer there's nothing wrong with it uh i just like greg wish there was more big bad tropical fruits or more dankness or more anything really um stylistically though if we're saying it's an american ipa probably an eight. I mean, it, it fits the part. Now, if we're talking about my personal enjoyment, probably a seven. I could buy this again. I can enjoy it, but it's just not there enough for me to go out of my way to get it. I just want to say one thing uh, based on that. <clears throat> Chad is right. This, this has like the Vermont IPAs, the old East, East Coast, like the Hetty Topper mouthfeels, the Sip of Sunshine, all of those. That's kind of where this lands for me personally. Just to just I mentioned that because that's kind of it's kind of like a hybrid for me of a New England style American. It's almost IPA. like got the got the, the 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 feel of a a Vermont style, but has the bot like the looks like a New England. Yeah, yeah, it just looks. And, and I just want to say that uh, as new schools, as I poured the rest of the can into, like definitely the mouth feels become a little bit more creamy and smooth, like more towards a New England style. But yeah, and I just thinking like I, I got sparkle chunks off of mine. So. Yes, yeah, same here. I think that probably has helped with the mouth feel a little bit. <laughs> Lucky pants. Yeah, All right. I didn't get any sparkle. So I'm a little sad. Oh. Oh. Ew. Anyway, to... side of my glass that I just poured in. Ew. Look at that. That's nasty. Right, too, late late take. too late to change your ratings. Too, too bad you're not an Instagram influencer there, Ashley. You know. Oh, <laughs> All right. Consent so let's go. Shoes. Let's go with the I virtual beers. Never had Falconer's Flight Hops before. Didn't even know what they were, but. Yeah, this is absolutely fantastic beer. Um, Style-wise, American IPA, like, it's like a 9. And then overall enjoyment, it's like a 9.5. Big fan of this beer. Many cheers, everybody. What a shock. He got it for free. I, I was going to say yeah, the exact same yeah, thing. You, always, you always can't. Blows free beer. You have to put a disclaimer in there. He got it for free. Therefore, everything's at least a 9. That's no other way. <laughs> That's a rib beard at a tip right there. 
All right. So um, now for the guy that paid for the whole damn thing. Um, yeah. So my, my, my thoughts on this one is I kind of agree with what everybody's been saying. It's very mildly flavored. Like usually with a New England style IPA, I, I don't, I'd, I'd like to get that nice tropical, that tropical juice, even with like an American style IPA, just I kind of want a little bit more flavor brought to the table. Whereas it's very, in, in, in this case, it's like slightly floral, get this light flavors of stone fruits, like, like uh, apricots, maybe not so much peach, but apricot for sure. Uh, orange, pineapple, it's very creamy mouth feel. So that, that's not very bitter at all. I get this uh, slightly chalky, slightly vegetal, um, um, a backbone like that, like mouthfeel to it, uh, with a little bit of spice and uh, a little, a little slight onion burn to it. Uh, but it does finish with this nice crisp, like not a, like an overly pronounced resin bite, but this little bit of resin there that's just enough to like to almost be like a, like crisp and, and and a nice a nice finish to it. But uh, overall, it's um, it's it's got a nice it's it's very crushable. Like everybody's been saying so far, this is something that you could just pile a few down on a hot summer day and and just just sit back and enjoy. Um, and in and in that, I mean, I kind of thinking, and I I actually wrote down these scores before Job, so I'm not really copying him, but I totally agree. Where I feel like style wise, this is an eight. Overall, this is a seven and a half. You have the Nick rating. I know you, Nick. Maybe too well. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised by your rating. Reading my mind. And, and I know everyone's already thanked you already, Nick, for this one. But uh, yeah. again, thank you very much for this. It was a very, very classy move by you to send this hey, off to us. I appreciate that. Thank hey, you. Yeah, and I'm just glad everybody enjoyed it. Sounds like it sounds like it was a hit. I kind of sons. Not, sons. Not no, only. I, I, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was going to thank you. But go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about what I was going to say after we do the reading. Oh, I was going to say not only, not only thank you, but when you really think about it, how cool it is that two different provinces in the States, seven different people, eight, including red beard, but no one includes red beard. Cause it's a free beard and he overrates everything. But it's also that we're on here doing this. Like that's a rarity. Pretty cool. So. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, for as, as far as spread as <clears throat> we, we, we kind of are, we're all doing this same beer from a microbrewery in Fergton, New Brunswick. Yep. Just because I bought seven cans and brought them up with me. And honestly, and honestly, Nick, uh, I really was looking forward to trying more of your beers at the Well and Piss Up, and I, I don't know why we didn't get to try more of your beers. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, yeah, because I brought I brought like eight trailways up with me in my yeah, suitcase. Yeah, you brought some good stuff, and I just don't know why why we didn't get the opportunity to try more of them. I, I, it's That'll my be a mystery. Yeah, you, and you think it's the funny part is you're saying that now the whole trip, your guys like, oh, it's just Nick stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least we tried stuff when we went back. Not everybody, but we when we dropped you off on that Saturday night, we we grabbed a couple of your beers and reviewed your beers them. Actually yeah, we, we reviewed walk. that. When, what? You got back, when your beers on the sidewalk outside the piss up because somebody forgot to bring them, or were they actually? <laughs> they were sitting in Redbeard's suitcase oh. by the door because that's where he put them down before he went and grabbed something else. Oh, he was going to steal them. So they, they, no, he wasn't trying to steal them. He was going. He grabbed them, was bringing <laughs> them to the car. Then I'm like, oh my god, I forgot something else. So he goes and grabs that and completely oh. forgets my stuff sitting because in his stuff because he was going to bring it to and then forgot. You know, he just slipped his mind. That's almost as bad as Greg forgetting his beers when he came down. <laughs> Fuck it, no, that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I literally, I here's what it is. Like, all the beers that I brought to the share, I shipped up ahead of time to Redbeard so that we would have them. She brought them down with us, and I was going back into the ship bucket manor to grab my beers for the share before we went over to share in Ewart's car. And when, we, uh, when I went back in, Redbeard was coming out, he had his laptop in his hands. He's like, "Here, can you take this out to the car?" I'm like, "I'm going back into my uh, back and get my beer." He's like, "I'll I'll grab those. Uh, just give me a sec." You're like, "Okay, fine. I'll take your laptop." <laughs> well, that, that's on you. For, that's I got it, I got it in the car, and then all of a sudden, when I get to you get to Ashley's place, I realize where's my stuff. I, I, Are you I, fucking kidding me? I have one question and one statement. One question would be: The ship bucket manor was only like what 20, 25, 25 minutes away. Why didn't somebody just drive back and go grab it and come back? You like, think about twenty five minutes. It's twenty five minutes each way. So yeah, so what? Would have been another hour. Trip, you, we would have been able to drink some of your beer. Also, the second thing is Karma took care of Redbeard clearly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah oh, he got a good ribbon out of that one. Yeah. Um, oh. 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 oh, oh, oh. That's yeah, too yeah. soon. Or is it but you know what? It, it all worked out for the best because instead of drinking 
the the infected uh, bottle of Imperial Stout that I brought. We drank the brewed IPA that I brought anyway from Big Tide and Petit yeah. So. Mm -hmm. But the the other beer that I had, big beer that I brought for the share was infected. So that I'm glad that we didn't get that one. And we ended up drinking the DDH Green Island and the Vanilla Beans anyway. So yeah. guys got those turned out to be better too. beers. And we did Although a Hammond River Blueberry. Too. Yeah. We did, yeah, we ended up coming back to the apartment and, and Ashley didn't have to drink a, a blueberry beer. Yeah. And I wanted to, to taste that beans beer too. I was a little upset. Oh, you didn't get to try it. Beans. Beans. You didn't Not get any. To be completely honest, I don't remember. I like I said, the video, the review is going to be posted sometime in the near future, but I don't remember you getting a pour of it. So I, I'll have to go yeah, look. It's, yeah, it's, the, the vanilla trailway vanilla beans is going to be on Joe's channel. So check but out the be, beer patrol. To be fair, though, Ashley did waste like two ounces of the beer that Earth sent because he's a monster. So I you know. did. You spilled it all really over your fucking too. carpet. Yeah, it was a great beer, and you just you just wrecked it all over the carpet. That, yeah, that, that yeah, imperial yeah. blueberry stout, which he, was awesome. He, yeah. he wanted to go back to the earth. Yeah, well, he it's, just showed us how much he really, truly likes blueberries. Is there any video of him actually drinking that beer and showing appreciation to earth for it? No, it was you dumping no. it all over the floor and then going to your wife actually cleaning it up for you because you were too hammered to uh, appropriately do so. No, I do remember ah. it. <laughs> I at the very least have a video, at least some video. Wait, wait, did, did Amy actually... really clean it up for him? She did. She oh, totally, she did totally cleaned know. it up for him. Oh yeah, Yo, she, she did. Actually, she did. Actually, she did. She's she's in the video. Was quite fucked up. I think Ashley was the most fucked up person. Other than Radar, he was probably the most fucked up. person. Ashley was ever. Ashley got uh, got up. Uh, the, the, the extra. I know we can talk about this in that. We'll talk about it in after. Let's go. Uh, yeah. I think. Anyway, I just want to say one thing that I do actually have video footage from the beer fest of Ashley drinking a blueberry beer. So it's not like oh, we avoided, shit. avoided blueberry for the entire weekend. So uh, moving right along, we actually have some comments. And Jamie, you were going to send me this. Yeah, you did. Okay, so I'll, I'll do up the uh, graphic. Uh, and you want anybody want to read the uh, current comments of the Eric? I'm off there. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So uh, Joe Joe Ganzel says, as a cook, I have worn plenty of uniforms. Oh well. Albino Rhino says he wears a uniform. Proof he's the better Joe. Yes. Yeah. Well, he was already the better Joe before that. So. Better Joe. Um, Albino Rhino says, and Irish Greg is still alive, just very rarely on. Uh, I think he. I think he might be dead. Oh, Irish Greg, yeah, I miss he him. He died. He died in the same car as that fella from Jamaica we used to hang out with. Which I don't oh God, remember. I don't remember his Marvin? Name off top. Marvin. Marvin. Yeah. Marvin. I miss Marvin. Marvin too. Yeah. I'm just. I'm just gonna quench my palate with some LCBO branded water. Oh, nice. Oh, you get the alkaline water from LCBO. That's a, that's our gov government money at work. You were just getting angry somewhere. Just get rehydrated. That you know, at like eight dollars a bottle, or, or uh, sorry, uh, whatever that is, carton. Fucking tetra pack of that. <sighs> oh, it tastes like I, Doug Ford. Joe Gansel <laughs> says, "Is it more of a New England IPA or a West Coast IPA, or a mix of the styles? And could someone hold the beer up to see what it looks like?" I guess. Uh, Somebody did that for him. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, well, there's the. Rewind, rewind. There's the anyone, anyone want to see leftover chunks in my? Honest, yeah. honestly, I got a little bit left. Oh, if, if I had to make a guess, if I was doing this blind, I would say New England style Palo. That's where I would go with this beer, honestly. That's yeah. probably yeah. a very good accurate. Accu I wish it was yeah. juicier if it was going to be. Because, I mean, totally honest, I, I don't think this is Trailway's best IPA, obviously. Um, but uh, they do make some fine stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is just so light and flavored. Like, if you're doing a blind, Palo would make a sense. I, this is like drinks like it's five and a half percent. You know what I mean? Like, it's, I don't know. Or, or even four. But it's super... Really yeah, it's super tr crushable. I mean, we. I, I, this is one of the rare, I think, um, beer analysis one on one where like most people have finished their beer. I get. Like, yeah, it's, it's. I've been done for like ten minutes, and I fucking. I'm a weakling. So it's good stuff. All right, so let's get to the graphic. Ooh, here we go. Ratings, style, seven point eight, and overall eight point oh. Oh, sweet. That's generally a pretty uh, a pretty uh, good score for. It's any solid, but it's no MGD. No, fucking yeah, coin. you guys you know were the trash. The sad that part night. is that yeah, we were. Actually, no, I think a lot of us were still sober because really, I might be even worse. Than... We drink the drink the beer analysis one hundred and one as the first of the night. The Nick, fact... for, some, for some occasion, either an anniversary or a milestone, we need to redo MGD. I don't think Let me ask you a question. Power. It's like the stuff of Let's... Legends now. Like, why MGD? Like... Well, I can see stylistically getting high because maybe it's like the best for whatever, a light beer, whatever you want to say. But how the fuck does overall get higher than an eight with that? I don't like, know, how but that we, really liked we really liked it. I think, what, what, was, what was the score in MGD? I have to go back and look. It was like a high eight. Oh, it was like, it was like, 
eight and seven point three or something, wasn't it for the scores? No, I think it was uh, higher. I think it was. I mean, the style style was like seven point three or something. But. Was I thought it was higher. But, but I mean, whatever. when it comes to a cheap macro locker, it's hard to go wrong with MGD. I mean, you know what you're getting when you open unless the you get the U.S. version. The U.S. version is much worse. Like, Yo, it doesn't matter. Like, it's MGD. like just about everything. That might explain Joe's protest. It's literally MGD. Like it doesn't matter who's fucking brewing it. It's MGD. I don't understand. Mm. Anyway, this is I, a good beer, though. I mean, that's I, I think the overall prevailing thought, right? Good yeah, beer. Yeah, and I don't think we we finished reading the comments, did we? No, nope. there's more there. Was it all nonsense after that, Jamie? Pretty much. <clears throat> uh, well, there was a, there was one comment down at the bottom I see from Joe Ganzel. Uh, he says his personal opinion is that you need to let the New England IPA sit for at least three weeks, and you should drink a West Coast IPA as fresh as possible. Off the 10th agrees, and Albino Rhino says this was just under a month old, so it fits your age requirements, sir. Yeah, it's the, these are all can May 6th, and it's currently the 5th of June. Yeah, so it's like it's just over a month. It's just, just, like, just over a month. Joe old. Ganzel says uh, PBR, and uh, he's <laughs> probably <laughs> typing 10 out of You know what? We actually gave uh, PBR some decent ratings when we did it, too. But it's no MGD, apparently, for fucking well, It was no though. MGD, but... <laughs> I actually didn't like PBR that much, but I mean, everybody else seemed to. I was a minority no, I, I in that episode. Sure. It's fucking PBR. I don't know. It's, well, whatever. Yeah, uh, and I, I'm sense. pretty sure I've over a couple comments of uh, like Eric Gilbert and Earth, Earth were in the chat. Um, hey, Earth. So. I, I know Ashley hates Earth because of the blueberry beer, but you know. Jesus. <laughs> well, yeah, he spilled it on the fucking. As soon as he gets it, he's like, I should have done a voiceover on Earth. It's my like, carpet, son. I should have done a voiceover for Ashley, but like, fuck Earth as he's spilling it. That would have been I'm, I'm pretty sure what he says was, global warming, bitch. And then he spilled it oh. all over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody needs to recognize. That's right. <laughs> oh. It was like, it was like two or three drops. It wasn't a lot of the beer. That no, no, no. It, it was, it was almost the end. Like, yeah, there's probably like a half ounce left, but it was just funny that he spilled it because, you know, Earth's on it is blueberry beers and fuck Earth. That's what he was thinking. Yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great time. That was a great time, regardless of whether or not Ashley respects Earth. Earth, we know the truth. Yeah, Ashley hates you and blueberry beers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Ash is responsible for global warming. You heard it here first. That's right. And uh, clubbing baby seals. That's, all. <laughs> That's at well, the top of his uh, wish list. Well, let's be fair. They weren't going to club themselves. God. All right. All right. All right. So I think. Uh, you know, Hold on, I don't we think got, anybody's I'm asked. Going back to MGD right now. Hold on a second. Nine point two five got it for style for MGD. Holy what? shit! Yeah. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> what was the overall thing? I did do the final tally on the math. Uh, for the style, we gave it a nine point two five. What? Oh, oh, whatever. That's that's higher than some of the craft beers that we gave. That's higher. And, well, uh, but overall, for the style. Overall personal enjoyment is 7.63. Oh, okay. 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 okay, that's fair. So it's not like we thought it was, we thought it was an amazing for the style. I mean, when you I, talk thought, about I thought it got higher overall. Macro so. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. well, that makes perfect sure. sense. Yeah, but overall, uh, you get, you get either way. Yeah, overall, there is no way. But I mean, at least we liked that. I mean, still, what, 7.65? That's like 6.3. That's that's pretty high. That, that is, is higher than a nick out of five. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, yeah, yeah wow. That's unbelievable. That's like a three point eight something out of five. Yeah, let's not try to do math right now. All right, yeah. Okay, let's uh, end it. Yeah. yeah, let's end it. I just crushed an, Amer an American IPA after all, right? Not sure. Is it though? So nobody's at, uh, asked what next week's beer oh, is. Well, What's next oh. week's beer, Nick? No, no, somebody in the comments has to ask it. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> God, Nick. It might be here a while. while. All right, done. I'm sure there'll be that a doesn't, that doesn't count. Uh, so tits beer bomb for Kenny asked, "What is next week's beer?" Yeah, <laughs> shout out, yeah. shout out to him. How are those flies doing? Oh shit! <laughs> I'm surprised he even remembers how to use a computer. <laughs> Don't disappoint right, man, Nick. Let's go. We are Taste going. Tasting niche. <laughs> <back to us. laughs> Tasting niche. He doesn't even know my channel exists. Um, anyway, no, but she knows you where its cock exists. Why? Oh, <laughs> why do we, we say that? Uh, no, anyway, moving right along. So, yeah, we're gonna take a, uh, uh, another page out of the same book. We're gonna look at an IPA that somebody bought a whole bunch of, 
Although I think this one, we technically, we all bought it, but we all decided, hey, we're going to all buy one of these for each other, for ourselves. But we're going to take a look at something that actually Ashley Sexton got a hold of because he did the mail order on it. This is from Half Hours on Earth, Necessary Juice, Sour Double IPA from, uh, was it Seaton or Seaforth? Seaforth, Ontario. Can May 7th, so it's actually a day younger than what we're drinking now. Best of force, September 7th, so we need to drink this soon. So that's next week's that's next week's beer. I wouldn't be surprised if most people can, can can't get this one because literally they don't have any more of them on their website. No, They're all sold yeah. out. It's a uh, you know it's a pretty big deal apparently. It's a, yeah. it's a big deal. Also, also I, even though Nick will discount the fact that you did order it for us, even though people could not follow um, directions, you still were able to get some for people. I thank you, Ashley. I do. Think. You're yeah, you still you did all the footwork and and yeah. and supplied your address and pocketbook. Like fucking herding cats. Like, hey, just send me an in- yeah. a, a, a Facebook Be- message. And your, then- anal- your analysis, getting these people all on the same page, just tends to be like herding cats. So, you know a lot about herding cats. Uh, no, fucking- all I know is it's just a motherfucking pain in the ass to get you guys to pick a next week's beer. Hey, her- You're like, oh, you pick it. I don't know what you guys can get. Anyway, we're all gonna have this beer next next week for the moment. yeah. We're all gonna have this beer. We're gonna fucking enjoy it too. Right? Gonna hate it. The rest of us probably talk. Yep, I won't it. like it. It's a sour. It's a sour. He hates it. Yeah, no, Eric, Gilbert, I'll probably Eric like Gilbert's it. already saying hot garbage. He hasn't even drank his yet. It probably oh, is hot garbage. Eric Gilbert's talking uh, based on his comments. I'd imagine Eric Gilbert's 103 years old. And, and you know what? Uh, Eric, Gil- one thing Eric Gilbert actually asked was next week's beer. So did we. And Well and Piss Up is in the chat. And says, oh What's shit! Next week's beer. Right, says oh, that shit. yours has to be. Got to be yours. Wife is turning on the Raptors game. Let me ask you oh. a question. Did you give? Did you get yours a uh, can of this? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, yeah, fuck them then. Yes, yours know. does have a can of this. Oh, yours does wow. have a can of. Yes, wow. well, he's allowed. He can't come no on, show. but I know he will not. No, 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 no. You know Inception. what? Inception. Did, did you give him a can of Inception? I didn't get it. No, I didn't get him a can of Inception, but I did sneak him a can of a double IBA from Trailway to make up for it. So. Uh, Nobody cares. Yeah, about but I mean, when it comes to uh, comes to you, if he wants to come up and give him the credit where credits due, he showed up to the well and piss up. He did. He did. And you'll see him again in about another five years. So. And we'll talk about that. <laughs> and the after chat. So I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, I want to thank uh, thank Ashley for supplying me your address so that I could ship a bunch of these up to you before the festival. Uh, I want to thank Joe for actually coming on for one week only. And, fuck uh, you. and we and of course everybody else. We got Chris, we got Craig, we got Jamie, we got Mr. Albino oh, Rhino coming on. Oh, and I want to say thank you everybody for watching. You know who you are, <laughs> Eric Gilbert, Joe Gansel, <laughs> Lee. Good thank you everybody. And we're gonna take this offline. Come on, come on with the after chat penis. Oh, those